Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. x, y, and z are positive integers, and we have this equation. So, one of the things we're going to do to solve this problem is we're going to, first of all, separate this into pieces. So, I'd like to write x as x plus 1 minus 1 divided by x plus 1. Now, this is going to allow me to separate the 1 and write it as 1 over something. So I'm going to be doing this for everything here. y plus 1 minus 1 and z plus 1 minus 1. So from here, notice that we're going to be getting x plus 1 over x plus 1, which is 1, another 1, and another 1. So the sum of these 1s is going to be 3. So we're getting 3 minus 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 over y plus 1 minus 1 over z plus 1, and the whole thing is equal to 2. Now, we can just go ahead and take everything on the left-hand side except for the 3 and put it on the right-hand side by adding, and we should be getting 1 over x plus 1 plus 1 over y plus 1 plus 1 over z plus 1 equals 3 minus 2, which is 1. Okay, so now we have the sum of 3 reciprocals and it equals 1. Now, if you remember, x, y, z have to be positive integers, so x, y, z are all greater than 0, right? Or we can say greater or equal to 1. But now we do have a different situation here. We have the x plus 1. So let's go ahead and use substitution. As you know, substitution is one of my favorite methods. Let's call this A, let's call this B, and let's call this C. So we're getting a simpler looking equation, 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C equals 1. And notice that since A is 1 more than X and vice versa, you know, we can safely say that a, b, c are all greater than or equal to 2. So they're positive integers, but not only that, they can't be 1 either. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this equation. Uh, and this is a very special type of equation. Usually with these types of equations, and I think we've done a problem like this when I did a video on Diophantine equations. I'm going to share the link down below. You can look at that. Uh, they're very similar. So we're going to use inequalities. So we're just going to say without loss of generality. Of course, sometimes people ask, well, what does WLOG mean? It means without loss of generality. So without loss of generality, I'm just going to assume that suppose, suppose, I'm going to suppose that A is less than or equal to B and B is less than or equal to C. But this implies that the reciprocals are kind of in the reverse order. So we're going to get 1 over C is less than or equal to 1 over B and that is less than or equal to 1 over A. And obviously, these are not uh, negative or zero, so it's okay to write them as reciprocals and the sign is not going to change. So now we have a really interesting situation here because we're able to compare the reciprocals. Now, what is that supposed to mean? I'm going to be writing a bunch of inequalities uh, to show you what I'm getting at. So the first one is going to look like this. Obviously, from transitive property, we can say that 1 over C is less than or equal to 1 over A. And of course, 1 over B is also less than or equal to 1 over A. Since we have the equality, we can also say that 1 over a is less than or equal to 1 over a. They're not because they're equal. Okay. Now, I'm going to add these inequalities, and that's, that's going to give me something super duper helpful. The reason why I do that is because I want to get 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c. And from here, I'm getting the a 1 over a three times, so that's going to become 3 over a. But we know that 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c is equal to 1, so I can replace that with 1. And that gives me 1 is less than or equal to 3 over a. If you flip both sides, you're going to be getting a over 3 is less than or equal to 1, which in, implies that a is less than or equal to 3. So this is nice because we know that a, b, c all have to be greater than or equal to 2. And in this case, we found that the smallest of these numbers, which is a in this case, needs to be less than or equal to 3. So a needs to be basically between 1 and 3 inclusive which implies that there's only two possible, actually, it's supposed to be two, not one. So basically, there are only two possible values for A. It can only be two or three. So let's go ahead and take a look at each case. And from here, we're going to get something interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at A equals three first. Now, if A is equal to three, if you substitute in my original equation, remember, well, not the original original, but this one that I got, so the reciprocals, the sum of reciprocals is 1. So let's go ahead and write that here so we can kind of look at it as we go. 
we know that this sum is equal to 1. Now, if a is equal to 3, then I can subtract that from 1 over, you know, 1 from 1, and I get 1 over b plus 1 over c is equal to 1 minus 1 third, which is 2 thirds. Now, this equation can be solved, but let me go ahead and get into a little bit of details here. We can make a common denominator because we're going to be using something real cool, and that is actually called Simon. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to cross multiply here. I'm going to be getting 2bc is equal to 3b plus 3c. So I kind of got the 2b here, right? 2bc. C. I got 2bc. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and set it equal to 0. Nice. So in order to solve this equation, I would like to take out a 2b. You might be asking, like, why aren't you, why aren't you taking b? You could do that too, but it's better to take out 2b so that I can start with c here inside the parentheses, minus, so I gotta adjust a little bit here, I do need 3 halves. Minus 3, now I gotta get the same thing here, I need to get the same thing so that Simon works, so I need to subtract 3 halves, but notice that I'm adding negative 3 times negative 3 halves to both sides, which is 9 halves. So this gives me 2b, or not 2b, yay, 2b minus 3 times c minus 3 halves is equal to 9 halves, if you multiply both sides by 2, you get 2b minus 3 multiplied by 2c minus 3 equals 9. Now we're going to look at factors of 9. Of course, we want them to be positive because if one of these is equal to negative 9, for example, you're going to get a negative answer, so it's not going to work. So we can have the following situations. Both of them can be 3. From here, we get b equals 3 and c equals 3. Or one of them can be 9 and the other, the other can be 1. In this case, b is going to be 6 and c is going to be 2. Now, do I need to consider the switches? Later on, I'm just going to go ahead and consider all of that. So we don't need to worry about it right now that b and c are interchangeable. So we got these values, but remember our a value was 3, so we know that a is 3 here in both of these cases. So that's one of the things that I find first. All right. Let me go ahead and take a look at the second case scenario, which is when a is equal to 2. Now, if a is equal to 2, then in my original problem, remember, it was 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c equals 1. If you subtract 1 half from 1, you get 1 over b plus 1 over c is equal to 1 half. So this equation, again, is easily solvable, but let's go ahead and look at the cases. Let's go ahead and use Simon again one more time. b plus c over bc is equal to 1 half. If you do the cross multiplications, you get bc is equal to 2b plus 2c. And then from here, bc minus 2b minus 2c is equal to 0. And if you use Simon, we're going to get something like this. I'm adding 4 to both sides. And this gives me b minus 2 times c minus 2 is equal to 4. Great. And from here, obviously, we have two cases. Either we can have 4 and 1, which means b is equal to 6 and c is equal to 3. Or we can have the 2, 2, and that means b is equal to 4 and c is equal to 4. So they're going to be equal in this case. But of course, we already have the uh, assumption that a is equal to 2. So those are going to be my second batch. Now, that's pretty much all the solutions because we know that a needs to be, if you remember our inequality here, a needs to be one of these values. So that's pretty much it. But here's the thing. I got these values, but let me go ahead and write the x, y, z values because we use substitution to get to a, b, c. And what was that? We said that, okay, let x plus 1 equals a. So that means x is equal to a minus 1, obviously, right? y is equal to b minus 1, and z is equal to c minus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to be subtracting 1 from each of these values and then get the answer from there. So let's go ahead and do that, starting with these ones. So if, and I can just write it as a set so that I'm switching I'm actually considering all the switches because x, y, z are all basically interchangeable. So from here, I get that x, y, z as a set can be, since I'm going to be subtracting 1 from each of these values, it can be 1, 2, and 5 as a set, or it can be 1, 3, and 3. Of course, they can just switch around. Or I have the other situation where I got 3, 3, 3. Let's go ahead and write that down here. I got the 3, 3, 3, and the other one was... 3, 2, 6. 3, 2, and 6. Those are A, B, C values, by the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 1 from each of them to get the X, Y, Z values. And that's going to give me 2, 2, and 2, right? And then the other one is going to give me 2, 1, and 5. But of course, when you consider the 1, 2, 5, and the 2, 1, 5, that's basically going to give you 
pretty much the same values, so it would not matter. So we only need to consider these three situations. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.